Hi, hi, well, my name is Natalie Kononenko, and this is part of an ongoing effort to uh, help incoming refugees and to develop best policies for doing that. With all of the refugees coming from Syria, what we've been trying to do is look at refugees from past migrations who have already settled here to help us know what to, uh, what to do, what to expect, and how best to behave. I said, my name is Natalie Kononenko. I'm cool chair in Ukrainian ethnography in the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies. And as I've said in another video, I myself am a refugee. I was born in a displaced persons camp in Germany after the Second World War. My student here is Assad. My name is Assad, and I'm a student at the University of Alberta. And over the last semester, I have been conducting interviews with past refugees to Canada to learn more about their challenges, not only in Canada, but prior to coming to Canada. One of the things that actually really hit home when I was looking at Assad's data was exactly that prior aspect, because having been born in a camp myself, I didn't realize the really tremendous burden that is faced by people when they make the decision to leave. The magnitude of that decision and how it can weigh on people just didn't occur to me because it was not something that I ever made. But looking back at his material, I remembered that my grandparents wanted to be buried in metal coffins exactly so that they could be shipped to their home, back to their home country, back to Ukraine when Ukraine became free. It was that important that to be back home, their uh, tie to their country was that strong. One of the things that we've been doing with these films is trying to bring attention to those aspects of the refugee situation that may not be covered elsewhere. And as uh, somebody who looks at language and culture, one of the things that's clear to me is that uh, learning language and learning culture is much more difficult for an adult than it is for a child. And this puts children, I can tell you from personal experience, into a very special and also burdensome situation. Because children learn language and culture much more easily, parents very often come to depend on them to act as translators. I remember as a child being pulled out of school, I don't know how many times, to take grandparents to hospitals, to take people to the bank, to fill out papers. I was the only one other than my dad who spoke English, and my dad, of course, was working to support a large family. And so it was really my burden, and it was quite a burden. It made, gave me the sense that I didn't have a childhood. In my uh, situation, it was okay, but a situation like that really could break a child having that much responsibility. At the same time, this new role of children, like acting as uh, mediators or translators, can be burdensome on the parents themselves, especially if they come from a culture or background in which they or the parents themselves are responsible for taking care of their young. For example, this can lead to very embarrassing situations. So, for example, um, parents when they or grandparents when they go to the hospital, they may need their kids to translate some of their medical information. This can be quite embarrassing in some cultures. Uh, parents might not even want to share some uh, of these stories or these incidents with their children in order to protect them. But because they need some help at the moment, they may be forced to uh, disclose that information which may be really embarrassing for the parents themselves. Very difficult, yeah. And another thing that we wanted to bring attention to was also gender. In a number of cultures like our own, mm -hmm. both Assad's and mine, uh, men tend to be the ones that go out and interact with people. Women are supposed to be, stay home and interact with a fairly closed community of neighbors and relatives. Well, when a family comes over, the man, because he's had the background of interacting with strangers, does quite well, or better, shall we say, and integrates. A woman is, first of all, deprived of that close community of neighbors and family, and also doesn't have kind of the experience or training in interacting with others, and that can be quite a difficult situation. 
Yeah, and I also kind of want to raise up the issue of independence and the feeling of independence that people seek when they come to Canada. Uh, you know, they're fleeing a war-torn country, for example. They're lacking that sense of freedom, which they hope that they, they receive when they come to Canada. But relying on children, for example, in the parents' eyes, could mean that they're still not gaining uh, that sense of independence that they sought or that they were seeking um, when they were coming to Canada.